So starting here with, I would say, the first tea machine that was visible on a, on a global scale because it was used by the Fonac racing team. Yep. Back then it was called Tea Machine SLT01. It was basically a, a frame that was innovative back in the days because it was a time where most of the frames, they were still made out of uh, aluminum. And already this frame started with having carbon seat stays, uh, carbon chain stays. And then there were a couple of iterations uh, made to the point where the entire tubes of the whole frame were made out of composites. So the connection elements, the locks, they were still made out of uh, metal. And as you can see, very complex. Uh, so parts were forged and welded together. Very complicated to make. But this frame was in use. Uh, it was in, in the early uh, 2000s. So let's let's say from 2003 to 2005. Yes. We see here one of the very first Fonac uh, racing bikes, which still had the alloy front triangle, the very iconic cross lock back then. I think that was a very visible thing. And then this is kind of the, the area where racing bikes were developed to be as light as possible and as stiff as possible. Yes. And for me, the pinnacle of this is this climbing bike that was made for Paolo Savoldelli and he used this in the 2004 Giro d'Italia. Uh, I don't know if you can see it but it has smaller wheels so 26 inch clearly with the motivation to be super light. Those tires are 19 uh, millimeters so wow. something that today looks very yeah weird but <laughs> of course the focus of this bike as I mentioned was really stiffness to weight so it was so specific it even didn't have uh, adjustable uh, seat post so it was a tailor-made uh, seat mast no adjustability to Paolo Savoldelli's uh, size. The bike was 6.8 kilo back then which was uh, quite remarkable and uh, yeah used for only for stages that finished with an uphill uh, climb. So this is kind of summing up I think the area of race bikes that were as light as possible and as stiff as possible. And then when Cadal Evans joined the BMC team and that was also the time when I started with the company the focus slightly changed. I had many discussions with him about 2006? that was uh, 2006 yeah what should a race bike be able to do and he clearly said hey I have to race this for three weeks and I need to stay fresh whether it's at the end of the day or at the end of the three weeks so I need a bike that is not only as light and as stiff as possible but also comfortable and this then led to this uh, team machine SLR01 so SLR starts then with the first full carbon bikes with the famous tuned compliance concept that was actually the, the idea, the bike architecture developed to combine lightweight, stiffness and compliance. And one of the key recipes to that was dropping the seat stays. Were you the first brand to do that? I think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure, yeah. If you are shooting for an optimal frame that, that covers uh, those parameters, yeah. you will automatically find that this frame architecture makes the most sense. Because yeah. by dropping the seat stays, you allow more rotational freedom in, in this area, which automatically translates into a more comfortable uh, right feel in the saddle. Okay. And what's with the triangle there? This, uh, we call it cross lock back then was a structural element that is basically putting the forces that come through the top tube in a smoother way into the seat tube. Let's say flaring the forces on the, on the wider area to have less stress concentration and make a stronger frame. That was a very important project I think for us because it it brought in the, the compliance and for instance here we have one of the race bikes used in 2012 Giro d'Italia by Taylor Finney. He won the prologue and then we made this special um, version, like it or not. Why would you not like it, the color? I would not say the color but the execution of the color. Okay, uh, right. <laughs> I, I, I have seen a nicer pink bike. Okay. The next big step was when we started the development for the model year 14 team machine. This is when we introduced computer simulation into the development process. Right. Before it was all, I would say, uh, empirical engineering. I mean, you were looking at physics, you were 
thinking about how should it work and, and then trying it out, making a lot of physical prototypes to get to the best performing bike. Yeah. And then we started systematically with optimizing the design with computer simulation. It's uh, basically an application on top of a standard simulation software okay. that we did together with a, with a high school here in Switzerland. I would say this application on top was actually the optimizer that was choosing the best combination of, I think it was around 30 parameters uh, back then. Some of them were related to fiber angles of the carbon plies. Some of them were related to really bike architecture. So for instance, where should the seat stays join? I mean, the higher up means more torsional stiffness, uh, but less comfort. The lower means more comfort, but less torsional stiffness. Then it was also combining at the same time uh, tube shapes, so dimensions, uh, how big should the tube be, uh, cross-section shapes, things like that. And the result was really a big step in terms of bike performance because we were able to increase the stiffnesses that are relevant for power transfer, so BB stiffness, rear triangle stiffness by 40%. And this without compromising the, the so loved and, and famous uh, vertical compliance. And actually, we were even, even able to reduce the weight. Wow. So that was a big step, but also to be expected once you, let's say, turn from a experience-based development into really a sophisticated computer development. Here we see uh, one of those bikes built uh, for or raced by uh, Richie Port. And then if we move further on, the next generation was introduced disc brakes. So disc brakes on this generation, then also integration of the cables. That was, we started this in 2016 with the Rope Machine as the first brand on the market. Uh, for good or bad, some they hate integration, some they love it. So you're the first brand to bring yeah. integration yes. to the market? Yes, okay. yes. Cable integration on disc brake bike with the rope machine Model Year 17, we have been the first one. And okay, and was all that developed in the impact? Yeah. yeah, this is typically something that was really born here because we were very, very scared that the steering might be impacted by having cables through the headset and also uh, yeah, additional friction in the cables, things like that. Uh, in the end, actually turned out that the integration of cables brought less steering interference than the outside cables from mechanical, let's say, or yeah, mechanical shifting or outside uh, braking. Wow. That's also why our design is, is, is very uh, narrow, I would say, to keep the cables very close to the rotation axis, which translates into less cable moving, mm. which is a benefit for steering, but also for wear and tear and wear of the cables. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, we move to the current generation of the T-Machine SLR01, where we added one more uh, parameter to the development list. So before it was uh, stiffness, weight, compliance, and now this bike also includes uh, aerodynamics in the equation. Obviously it was not an easy one because it's contradicting uh, yeah, some of the other parameters. Making a bike that is very aerodynamic is easy if you disregard uh, weight and stiffness. Uh, I think aero bikes are also not known as being very compliant. For us, Team Machine was always a bike that should score very high in all parameters. So it was not uh, making the most or the best in this, but just a very nice riding package. So we added uh, learnings from aerodynamics, especially on the fork plates and the elements that see the wind as clean air, I would say, yep. uh, which is namely also the down tube. And uh, we integrated also the bottle cages into the design. That's something we learned from our aero bike that has a significant effect on, on, on drag. Today, I think it's more making the four even better. I cannot yet think about the fifth thing. <laughs> um, and I should know by now because... Uh, it turns into you, a bad one. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you know how, how uh, long development takes, especially of those high performance bikes. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. It's always a pleasure, especially to talk about Team Machine because it's really a bike I think uh, even internally everyone loves and yeah. everyone loves to see the progression of this, uh, of this bike.